All right, so where we left off on our fantasy landscape, we had done our sketches, um, and we had our, our references that were in a folder off to the side that inspired our sketch. Now we have to decide which one we want. So let's see. I think I like the vertical more. And I don't get to do, I don't get to demo that many verticals. So I'm going to choose the vertical. So what I'll do, because I have both and I like to keep track of my process, put a little star next to it, and then save that file. And this is just from your scan. It's going to go in my assignment one folder. But to be safe, I always save to the desktop so I can see that it's saved. So we start with all of our sketches and all of our notes, because I might want to reference that later. All right? If you're doing this in your sketchbook, you can always just have your sketchbook open, and you can reference it later. But once I choose which composition I'm using, then I have to use some new tools. For the first time in this class, we're going to crop. So it's underneath the magic wand tool, the little crop box. And just like a transform box, you can rotate the crop, scale it. I want you to get it as close to your sketch boundaries as possible without losing anything in your sketch. So I don't expect you to draw perfect rectangles but we can make them perfect rectangles in Photoshop. So I'm cropping right, right beyond my thumbnail edges because I don't want to cut any of my sketch off like that. This is the preview window. Everything's going to look a little distorted this way. But once you, you like what you see, then you hit return, and it will crop it. Now this is based on the, the resolution that your screen grabs are. So now if I go to image size, You'll see how tiny it is. It's 1 inch by 1.6 inches at 72 pixels per inch. It's only 78 pixels by 118. It's only 27K. This is the same amount of memory as a few words in a Word document take. We need to change that now to make this our print-worthy document for our final project. So what resolution do we use? 350 for this lab for Arts 205, Studio 205. So. I make sure resample is checked, but I also make sure that this chain link is checked so that the proportions are, are always kept. And so the resolution I change from 72 to 350, and all of a sudden it goes up monumentally, but then I also don't want to print it at one by one inch. I want to print it at around 11 by 14 inches. Okay? Because if we make our our assignments around 11 by 14 inches at 350, then we can print them up to 16 by 20 inches at good quality, and we can print them down to 8 by 10 at good quality, and it gives us the most flexibility. So first I have to notice which one's bigger. Well, my height is bigger, so I'm going to make my height 14 and see. Okay, so 9.2 by 14, that works. That fits within 11 by 14. Um, if I put 11 here, I can do 11 by 16, but that's bigger than I, I likely need. But it's up to you. Because if you did 10 megapixel references, they should still work. But I'm going to go ahead and use my height as 14, so it fits within 11 by 14, and at least one of those dimensions is either 11 or 14 at 350. Look what it does to my sketch, right? This is how the computer makes up information. They're like ripples in a pond. So it has to add hundreds and hundreds of pixels around each original pixel. And when it does that at an edge, it just softens it and softens it and softens it. Which can look kind of cool, but it is not considered high quality. So this is not going to be a good print. But this doesn't need to be. This is just my sketch. Okay, so now my memory is more like 45 megabytes instead of just 100k. But now I need to make my sketch fit the space a little bit better. 
And so what I can do is use transform tools, right? So command T, but because it's a background layer, it won't let me do command T unless I first select it all, which is command A. So command A to select it all, then command T. And then if I right click within it, I can use distort and I can drag my corners to fit the proportions a little bit better. And this looks pretty good to me. Okay, then, whoa, 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 what was that about? <laughs> That's why you have history. There we go. Then, then you want to deselect and you do Command D to deselect. So I haven't, I haven't saved it except as the original sketch. So whenever you save something, you put your name in it and then a description. And I just saved my sketch as a JPEG, yes. Because we don't have any layers yet. Okay, I want to get off the crop tool and I want to deselect Command D. Now, I don't want it to be a background layer anymore. I want this to be the first in my layers. So I'm going to double click on it or just click on the, the lock and it will change it to layer zero. Okay. Now I want to add a background layer behind it. And I want to have space behind it to work. So I want you to think of this as a collage. This is my plan for my collage. So if you're putting it on your desk at home, you have your plan for your collage. It's on the finished paper. Where do you put all your collage materials? Usually you put them on the desk around your finished paper, right? So we need to build that space. So what we're going to do is go to image canvas size. Usually we use this to grow the paper. But in this case, we're going to use it to grow like a working space around our image. So the, the standard canvas size I use for a working space is a full size sheet of watercolor paper, which is a full size sheet of printing press paper. It's 30 by 40 inches. So I'm going to make my width 30 because mine's taller than it is uh, wide and my height 40. And I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to fill that new layer with edit fill. We've done this with white in the past, but this time I'm going to, going to fill it with middle gray, 50% gray. Fill that in and then I'm going to move that, that's my working space, move it behind my sketch. So I have my sketch, which is at the right resolution for printing, but now I have space for all of my references. And I know what references to bring in because of my sketchbook. So I have number one, number two, number three. These are all the reds. So I go to my folder. Oh, wrong one. To get used to this semester's. So I go to my reference folder. And I look at all my reds. And I don't even need to bring these on the desktop. I can just pull them right in from, from my folder. So I know I'm going to need all the reds. So I first bring this one in, drag and drop, and it will come in as a smart object. And then I can just move it off to the side, hit return. It's still a smart object, so don't worry about scaling it yet. I'm going to move it on top of my sketch. Right? Then the next one, move that in. Not every single reference you might use, but just the ones you used um, for your sketch. So this one is a really large resolution, like huge, way bigger than I need. But even by shrinking it here to fit it into the corner, because my water tower, tower is about that big, I'm not losing any quality because it's still a smart object. So it's still referencing the original file. And even when, I, unlike Pixlr, even when I drag it off the edge, Photoshop doesn't lose that information. So at any time, I can have the information that's off to the side. So I've gotten three in there. Let me get all five. And then I'll come around and help you guys set up yours. And you have to hit return because they're smart objects. And I can leave one behind my sketch. That's fine. I'll just move this one down. 
All right. So that's the first step. All right. So we're going to we're going to work in digital 1 in the most direct way possible. So we are going to control the pixels. That's what Photoshop is. It gives you control of every pixel on the screen, and it allows you to have multiple layers. So instead of cutting these out in any complicated way where we do like a, a clipping masks and, and different uh, alternative ways, we're going to deal with them directly. So how do we do that? Well, it's just like when we did the cartoon jumble. I'm going to work from the background of my sketch forward because I don't want to cut out any information I might use later, right? So what I'm going to do is use my move tool and say auto select for the layer. I'm going to move the layer on top of my sketch and hit command T and scale it in, right? Sometimes it helps to take the opacity down so you can see how it overlaps with your sketch. And I know I want to use this cloud sunset kind of thing, right? Then I'm going to hit return. And I'll put it at 100%. And then I might move it behind my sketch. So I know that one's there. The next element are the mountains. And that's roughly the right size. But because this isn't the background element anymore, wow, I placed that just right. Now I want to cut this out a little bit. Because what's the problem with layering this reference on top of this reference? I have a hard edge there, right? So right now, I don't want to meticulously try to select out that cloud. I just want to do what's called a rough selection. So I'm going to use my lasso. Okay. And on my smart layer, I'm going to say, okay, I roughly want, and take more than you need, I roughly want all this. <laughs> and if I want to add a little more with the lasso, you can hold down shift. You can bring in a little more. But notice I am not using the rectangular marquee. I am grabbing more than what I need but I'm leaving the edges irregular. Now I'm going to hit Command J. Command J will take what I selected and duplicate it onto a new layer, which automatically saves those pixels into Photoshop at that size and resolution. So it's the same as rasterizing a smart layer, but by doing it this way, I get my, my cutout that's already rasterized and able to be edited, and if I ever need to go back to my smart layer to get something, I have it at full resolution. So that means I could go back to this, resize it to be a lot bigger, and use like a foreground rock or something. So that's the way I recommend doing it. The problem with this layer, because I didn't duplicate it, um, it's still a smart layer, so it won't let me erase from it or change its color or anything until I rasterize it. So if I treated the background like every other layer, I would just do this. I would see where it overlaps my sketch, right? And I would say, okay, I want irregular edges around it, more than I need, and then I hit duplicate. And then move that above my sketch and turn off the smart layer. So as I am done with my smart layers, I move them to the bottom and have them turned off. So now I've got these two. Okay, what's next? Command O will bring me back to this. I need the middle ground here. Use my auto select layer, move this one up. Use command right bracket to move it on top. And what do I need from this? I might actually uh, command T and actually stretch this up a little bit. It's organic, so I can get away with that. And I basically want all of this. Then command J, then turn off the smart layer, move it to the bottom. Okay, and then see my sketch. 